Hi, this is Ms. Clemmy, and welcome to the screencast on specific defenses of our immune system, the last in a series of videos on our body's defenses. Now, this could be the most tricky uh, level of defense, but I think if you take a look at this picture, uh, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. Think about a bank robbery. And so we have a cop chasing a criminal. And the cop isn't looking for any bad guy in the street. It's looking for the one with the red sneakers. So it's a customized attack to that particular robber. So let's begin our approach to specific defenses. So first of all, that cop has to recognize and capture the invader. And by recognizing the, inv the invader, the bad guy, the red sneakers, these are called antigens. Now, your regular cells have antigens on the outside, and they mark those cells belonging to you. But everything else on this planet also has antigens on the outside of their cells. Pollen has antigens, um, viruses, bacteria, even transplanted organs have antigens that don't match your own. And so that's a way your body recognizes self from non-self cells. So that's the first step. And um, so basically, this is the part of the first step here. We recognize the bad guy here, and we captured him. We took him in for questioning um, in the interrogator's room, and we just destroyed him with lysosomes, so he talked. He told us all about his other accomplices. And so then those cells said, you know what? We're going to draw up a little sketch of all the other people that are wanted and display it on the outside of the police station so we can try and catch the rest of the bad guys. And so we made a wanted poster, and the wanted poster is called an MHC protein. It's kind of like an antigen in that it's also displayed on the outside of our cells. But what's really cool about the MHC is that it always is updating in real time little snippets of what's going on in the cell. And so if that cell destroyed the first robber, it's going to display that information and that wanted poster of here's what we're looking for. So here's what this looks like from a, a bank robbery perspective. We have our wanted poster right here, and that's displayed in the MHC protein on the outside. Okay, and that MHC protein is then going to tip off the wanted poster. We're going to inform all the cops, all the helper T cells, this is what we're looking for. We need to make sure that we capture all the accomplices. And so the helper T cells then become activated. They notice that that MHC, something's fishy. And so they release a chemical called a cytokine. And that opens the floodgates for defense. That activates a lot of different cells in our specific defense response. So here's what it looks like. That cytokine released from the helper T cell is now going to activate all the white blood cells, the lymphocytes. And so we have B cells that are going to be activated, and we have um, T cells that will be activated by the cytokines. And um, remember, we, they just are different because they develop in different parts of the body, the bone marrow for B and the thymus for T cells. And these guys are just waiting to become activated. They circulate around in our lymphatic system, in our interstitial fluid, and in our blood, looking to be activated, looking to, to um, kill off any invaders. And so when B cells are activated, they're going to invoke a, a response called the humoral response. And this is an attack on invaders um, within the fluids of our body. On the other end of the spectrum, the T cells will become activated and invoke a cell-mediated response, which is an attack on infected cells. We're going to first take a look at the humoral response. So we've already identified here the invader. And um, that invader got munched up by a macrophage. The macrophage displayed the wanted poster on the MHC protein. That told the helper T cells to release cytokines, which then activated our B cells. Oops. And our B cells are going to produce handcuffs to capture more of the accomplices. But the problem is there's so many antibodies that could produce so many different handcuffs. There are these little Y-shaped structures 
it takes time to figure out, well, is it the green one that's going to work, or the red, or the blue, or the brown? So eventually it figures out, okay, it's going to be the green. These are the antibodies that are going to work. They're going to match up with the invader. And so then those B cells make mass quantities of B cells, and we call them plasma B cells. And then those plasma B cells are going to release all those antibodies, and those antibodies are simply going to handcuff the invaders. They're going to immobilize them. They're not going to destroy them yet. They're just going to handcuff them. At the same time that the plasma cells are releasing antibodies, your body also makes memory B cells. And those B cell, memory B cells act as reserves. They remember the right antibody for the right antigen. So if you ever get that same invader inside your body again, it will know immediately how to get rid of it and destroy it so that it doesn't take that long time to figure out the right um, handcuffs to use. So let's look at our humoral response. But I said, this isn't the whole story. We've got to get rid of the invaders. We've only handcuffed them. So we take a look at this. Um, we have the virus has been immobilized, has been handcuffed by antibodies produced by plasma B cells. And so that basically makes them, renders them helpless, and the macrophages can come and eat them up a lot easier. And so let's look at the humoral response. Notice it's humoral because it's happening on the outside of our cells. Now, at the same time as that's happening, some cells are already infected with the attacker. So to make sure we kill all of the accomplices, we have to call on a different type of cell, an assassin, and then a killer T cell. So here's what happens in this response. So we're over here, we're onto the T cells in the cell-mediated response. Now, a lot of these steps are similar, but let me show you where they differ from the humoral. First, different is this. We have a microbe that's invading the cell. We can see there's right here. But this is not new. An MHC is presented on the outside to tell the helper T cells that there's something in the cell that shouldn't be there. Those helper T cells then are activated, and so they release a cytokine. You can see them here. Now here's where it differs. Now we're not activating um, B cells for this particular event. We're activating killer T cells right here. And those killer T cells now know what to look for. They know what MHC to look for. And as soon as they find a cell that matches, they literally will go and they will bore holes into the infected cell. And so water will enter and all these fluids will enter and that cell will burst it'll be destroyed. And at the same time, don't forget about our uh, memory T cells. They do the same thing as the memory B cells in that they remember this MHC. And as soon as they see cells with that MHC displayed, they will immediately destroy them. They don't have to wait to be activated by all of these chain of events. So it's a much faster, quicker response. So if we combine these together, here's the whole story. So say a pathogen has invaded our blood, or invaded our, our internal system. They breach the skin. If they're just floating around in our blood, we have a humoral response. If, however, they've invaded cells, we have a cell-mediated response. But in both events, it has to begin with an MHC cell, or an MHC presenting that particular antigen, because that activates helper T cells. And then helper T cells will, will activate B cells in the humoral response to divide into plasma and memory B cells and capturing those anti, uh, antigens via antibodies. The helper T cells will also activate regular T cells to differentiate into cytotoxic or killer T cells and memory T cells to uh, destroy any infected cells. So let's look at our immune system. Keep in mind that our immune system is so awesome because not only is it very specific, they make custom antibodies for all the different antigens that, we've ex that we'll be exposed to in our lifetime, um, but they're very diverse in that they can respond to all those antigens. They have a memory to remember when you get that second antigen again that it's almost instantly destroyed. 
And they're really good at telling what shouldn't be in our body and what should. That's a look at our body's specific defenses, and I hope that was helpful.